everybody, this is Jerry, and I have a special guest. This is Shayna Blass. She is a performer, a singer. I used to sing with her, and I always knew she was very talented, so I wanted to bring her on. This will either go on Jerry Sings or go on my big channels. We'll see what happens. But anyway, Shayna, um, welcome. Hi. Thank you so much. So, so you, nice to catch up. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course, yeah. Let's get to it. So you are doing a show right now in Massachusetts? Is that what's going on? Yes. Yeah, I'm doing Hair the Musical at Berkshire Theater Group. Um, it's usually in the, these shows and these theaters in the Berkshires, it's like a summer stock thing, but this feels more of like a, a full show because we had four weeks of rehearsal and we have four weeks of the run. Um, yeah, it just feels like a full, it is a full production, but it's... Mm -hmm. It's hair, the musical. So it's 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 pretty awesome to do hair in the Berkshires. Super hippie. And tell me more about this musical hair for those of us who are not initiated. What is hair exactly? Sure. So it was uh, written in 1968, and it's basically a culmination of the times. So it, it's there's sort of a storyline. There's like three main characters, Claude, Berger, and Sheila. And Sheila goes to NYU and she's a protester and Berger and Claude are like these free spirits. Claude is in our production is getting antiquated into the hippie group. They're all in this tribe. That's what that's. So anyone who's not like a main character, their, their characters are the tribe. And they live, they live in New York City. So it's hippies in New York City protesting the war, experimenting with drugs and sex and burning their draft cards. And um, all of the music is kind of reflecting, not kind of, it is reflecting the rock and roll, the mix between right. rock and roll and blues. Um, in the 60s it's it's really really fun mm -hmm. i see wow so what do you play in this so i am technically in the tribe i'm in the ensemble but i play all these bit parts so mm -hmm. i um play claude's mom in a scene where there's um a scene where he comes back to the house and his mom and dad are at the kitchen table and he's like i I'm a free spirit and he has these like anti-war pamphlets and we don't get it. You know, that's the reflection of uh, the 60, you know, that generational gap. Um, and then I play Margaret Mead, who was an anthropologist at the time who comes into this space. I come through the audience um, and <laughs> I approach the three hippie boys who are on stage. I'm like, can I ask you a question? And I ask them about being hippies. Um, and then I have a couple other little like parts and lines in there. So I'm, I spend a lot of the time during the show changing costumes. Oh, wow. That must be <laughs> yeah, I think cool. I have, I think I counted like 10 costume changes in like two hours. Mm -hmm. So you're best friends with the makeup costume people after this. E yeah. If there were makeup costume people, wow. <laughs> it's a very small production. So, um, we do have one um dresser actually for 14 actors which is crazy her name's wow. francesca and she's a badass and i love her mm -hmm. um but yeah there's a, also like i mean always in a in a theater production like there's a show on stage and then there's the show backstage mm -hmm. like there are two asms the main um uh, production stage manager backstage and the dresser and we have a sound engineer backstage so mm -hmm. And there's just props everywhere and there's costumes in the dressing room. So whatever show is happening on stage, there's an equally interesting show happening backstage with the props and the dropping and the dressing and the quick changes and the mic tape and the taking off the mics and putting the mics back on. It's, it's pretty, the theater is really exciting. <laughs> wow. And is theater your thing for now? Or do you want to maybe move into movies or do other things too? What do you think your next five years are going to be? Um, <laughs> I have been doing theater for so long. Um, 
and I love it. It'll always be a part of me, but I, I just recently moved to New York about a year and a half ago and started to get into, yeah, started to get into more TV, film, commercials. I had, um, I was on one episode of Mr. Robot. I don't know if you watched that, but. Um, uh, why does that sound familiar? Tell us more the, about Mr. Robot. It's on the USA Network. Um, uh. And it's, um, Rami Malek is the main character and he's amazing. And it's, um, he's like kind of like a hacker. Mm. Um, and uh, he just has this like incredible inner monologue throughout the whole show. And um, I, I had, I got, to be on one episode with like I was in it for like three minutes with like the main girl but it's still cool it's just those little building blocks that you have to like that you just start and you just show up and you audition and um and so all of it so like the theater the tv film I mean hoping to get more into tv and film being in New York because I lived in DC for so long and that's such a theater centered world yeah um and New York is just giving me so much more access to everything. So absolutely would love to do. Um, I'm really passionate about new works, like new plays, new musicals, but also TV and film and, um, and music and my own music. Cause I run a cabaret up in Harlem called Basement Social. Uh -huh. um, and anyone can find that on Instagram at Basement Social NYC, um, also on Facebook, um, facebook.com slash Basement Social. Um, and I have like, I do my own songs. I do covers. I have a little jazz, like house band. And then, um, I will have guests. So guest singers, my friends, people who I've run into, I was like, I really like your shit. Will you come do my show? Um, comedians, musicians. I've had like, uh, folk singers, a little band. I've had like electro pop, um, it's really cool. And that's something that I'm working on developing too. I had a band when I was living in DC, but um, we were kind of all in a loving, amicable way. We we're all kind of going our separate ways before moving. And I wanted the opportunity to live in New York while I had the energy. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, so I'm looking to do that too. While I'm up here in Massachusetts, I'm writing a lot of music. Um, there's a couple people in the cast who play guitar really well and we get together and we jam on our days off or uh right now we have our days free since we have the shows at night so so that's pretty cool in developing my own sound and music I mean hopefully in the next five years to have my own band and tour that's wow. the dream and have an EP and have an album yeah wow I'm looking at Basement Social NYC while you're talking about it and I see familiar faces like Flory Bagel. That's really yeah. funny. Yeah, Flory sang, Robin sang. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at our second one, um, she was really brilliant and like wrote, performed a song that she had written wow. that day, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I know. It's so it's so cool. I feel so lucky to have gone to New York when I like now when I am because um I have such a network there a bunch yeah. almost that's a big reason why I moved too because most of my friends from DC moved up there <laughs> I was like I don't want to be all alone here yeah so that it's really good it's so important to have a community I think especially as a creative but I think just in the times that we're living in in these political economic environmental times wherever we're headed it is so crucial to have a community and to have people around you that you really feel are your people and that you feel like you can be yourself with them and you don't feel judged and yeah you can you can be completely vulnerable i think vulnerability is um not taught enough and uh, not explored and I'm learning that in like uncovering more of my creativity and how important it is to be vulnerable and you need good friends for that exactly tonight with words unspoken Tell 
me about after high school because in high school we were in the well, what do you call it the magicals i forgot the name yeah. of the magicals yeah, yeah. together and then after college did you pursue music immediately or did you have a journey that kind of made you find music and theater again no i was on a one track mind i mean mm -hmm. i wanted out of high school i wanted a bfa program like I wanted to go to a musical theater BFA program. Like I am a very, like I, I'm, I was born in April. I mean, my sign is an Aries. Like we are the Ram. Like I think with my head and I, once I have something in my head, like I will go after it until I get it. And then I'll probably change my mind and do <laughs> something else. But, um, but I wanted to do musical theater only. I was obsessed with musicals and I auditioned for, eight schools mm -hmm. and I only got into one <laughs> and that was Catholic University in DC and they gave me a little bit of money and I was like I you know I don't know if you felt this but in senior year in high school you get to a point where you're like fuck it like I already got it I just want to go to college like I don't want to be in high school anymore yeah I didn't want to be in my mom's house anymore. <laughs> I just wanted to start being an adult and growing up and living and like not having to have a high school schedule, which is so funny yeah. um, because I'm like, Oh, I, now I need structure. Um, but so I went to Catholic university for, that was a bachelor of music. So I had piano lessons and we did, um, theory which I just wasn't I wasn't great at I mean I was never that good at math and I think those things go hand in hand and now that I'm like I've been playing the ukulele for four years and I'm I'm picking up the guitar I'm teaching myself guitar and like theory is really important mm -hmm. so if I could go back 10 years to my 18 year old self and say um just stick to it <laughs> it'll be worth it <laughs> but I I didn't really, I loved the head of my program, Jane Pesci Townsend, and I loved my friends that I met, but I just wasn't, I wasn't really fulfilled with the education and, and, and I was getting to a tipping point of like, is theater really what I want to do? So I ended up applying to Towson at American University and I transferred to American oh. in their theater program. I didn't even have to audition or anything. I just kind of sent my stuff and, and I had done some theater outside of school. I mean, in between high school and college, I think I understudied somewhere in DC and at Catholic, I still was auditioning. So I actually, my, when I was going into my sophomore year of college at AU, I already had um, a show booked. I was going to do rent at Keegan theater. That was like the fall of, um, 2009 um which that show ended up winning a helen hayes award the next year when the awards are um in the spring and that helped me catapulted me basically into the dc theater scene i mean i was going to school at au but i was still auditioning i would go to open calls and i would um i did like source festival i did um a show at landless theater company in the summers between um between semesters and that was really really awesome and also so important for when I got out of school because people already knew me and mm -hmm. I already knew how to how to navigate casting directors and I knew you know what what theaters I could go to opening nights or closing nights so I could meet more people so I could meet the directors and meet the other actors and I just I just became obsessed with DC theater and I saw everything I saw I would probably see a show at least once a week wow there's so much to see and I just I wanted people to know me and I wanted to know them and um so now I feel like I'm kind of doing that all over again in New York but there's so much more I know there's so I know. much I mean there's there's so much theater but also there's so much music and comedy. I took a class at, um, I might be getting ahead of, of your question, but I, I've taken class at UCB, which is Upright Citizens Brigade, mm -hmm. Improv, um, 
I've gone to open mics for my own music and sang at some jazz clubs with friends. Like there's just, it's, it's just, there's just so much to do. <laughs> it's really overwhelming. And then you have to make money on top of that, which is yeah. just very stressful. <laughs> Agreed. Um, but one so thing, that's what I did after high school. <laughs> mm -hmm. One thing you said earlier that I want to emphasize to my audience is the importance of being in it when you're studying, right? This is so important. Mm -hmm. um, I took classes briefly at Second City and they actually required us to watch shows. And they, we had student discounts, it was like $1. But the reason they wow. required us to, and it was only $1 was because you need to see how improv is applied when you're studying improv. So it's the same thing, that's yeah. why, you know, on my fight channel, a lot of you see my fight channel, I'm taking jujitsu at least twice a week for the obvious reason that I'm doing fight commentary. I better be in it. I better be yeah. doing jujitsu. So what you did, it's like you were auditioning, you were studying and learning the theater, but you were watching shows twice, you know, however many times a month. That was something that probably really helped you a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And that's like for your own personal study, but also you have to be a part of a, of the community. I mean, yeah. theater, performing, music, it's, it's all a community and it's all about who you know. And I mean, it's kind of an obvious lesson of like, don't be a dick yeah. when you're, when you're in, you know, I mean, I think we hear so many stories about divas and, and celebrities and all that stuff, but ultimately the people who will continue to work and the people who, will work more often are just people who you want to work with and you want, and you want to be learned and you want to know what's going on around you. And I, I, is, is the, is there like a fight community? Uh, I guess there's a jujitsu community. Kind yeah. Of I mean, for me, the, the thing about me is that I, for now, I don't need to be bros with all of them because I just do my own thing. But in the future, I probably wouldn't need to, get closer with them so yeah the fact that i train at my place that that'll be a big sign that this guy's serious about it so right. it is true what you say it's like you really have it's it's a lot about who you know but you know the way i live the way i built my career um i'm basically a one-man pony or what do you what do you call it one man show not a one trick not a one trick pony i, I was combining two expressions that don't putting work. two together yeah. yeah i'm a one-man show but like in the future especially if i I don't know. Once you get to a certain point, you probably inevitably you're going to need people. So I guess yeah. making the preparations. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even this community that, you know, your audience, that's so important Yeah, that, that, you know, that you have built, you're building that trust with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So are you one of those Brooklyn artists in New York? Or are you like living <laughs> in Manhattan? Where are you living? Um, I live in Harlem. So oh I in yeah. Yeah, it, it's a, I'm a Manhattan girl for now. Mm -hmm. It's, I would eventually love, I will eventually move to Brooklyn just mm -hmm. because it feels more like DC, mm -hmm. <laughs> like the neighborhoods of DC. I think I need like smaller yes. buildings. <laughs> no, but my the rent parts is, of Brooklyn do feel like the, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Like the, the parts of DC around Ben's Chili Bowl, that area feels a lot like Brooklyn. Yeah. Even, um, I lived in a neighborhood called Petworth. I don't know if you ever went there in DC, mm -mm. but it's so, so beautiful. And it's just, it's a neighborhood and there's a couple restaurants and bars and it's just very chill. And I think I need that to juxtapose the lifestyle. I, I love the pace of New York. It fits me so well. Like I, me too. I can get up, I can go. I love the energy around me, but but I, but my home is so important to me, and I, and I'm sure some of your, your audience and your listeners out there, they might feel that too, or if they're feeling kind of stuck in the, their creativity, or they're feeling like they aren't happy in general. Like the first place you look is your home. Yeah. Like what, what is working about it? What's not working about it? How can you shift it? And, yeah. and I. I live with two amazing friends and artists and I love my room and I, I've created it, you know, curated it to be a space that I want to be in. Um, very simple, some plants, you know, but, um, but I love the neighborhood. I mean, Harlem is such an incredible, 
rich history of music yeah and um you know uh, it's definitely like all of new york is gentrifying for sure and i have you have to be aware of that living in such a historical neighborhood but a lot of it i mean just being able to walk around in my neighborhood and see art and see murals on there's like the um Autobahn uh, mural project. So there's all these birds everywhere. And New York's so amazing about little pockets of um, gardens and uh, little tiny parks that are so necessary for this fast paced life that you just like, let me just sit on a bench next to a tree for a second. And then, mm. and then I'll go into the subway. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it really has such an incredible music scene now and a lot of jazz musicians uh, live in Harlem, but they're always going down to the West Village and the East Village to play. And and, and so I, I'm interested in, in what what's being built that's still in the neighborhood. And that's mm. like a part of why I love that. Um, and I do my, my shows at Basement Social out of Chipped Cup. So it's a coffee shop um, between 148 and 149. Um, and there's also another coffee shop called Manhattanville that they host um, open mics and music nights. So it's just really incredible, like after hours coffee culture that's supporting this music. And they, they are, were so excited to have, to have music and to have shows there. And I've had um, any of my friends who are like, God, I want to host a cabaret or I want to host a, a show or even a birthday party. I'm like, reach out the chip cup. They're amazing. They just, they want, it to be a space where things happen so mm -hmm. that's that's what's really great about my my neighborhood but i am looking forward to going to moving to brooklyn at some point just because <laughs> it feels familiar <laughs> and i exactly. just want to be nurtured and held you know is yeah. that so wrong yeah i i was while you spoke about petworth i looked it up on google maps i'm like oh man i now remember why dc has its draw there's like all this greenery in such a I little know. area. I, I know. It's like I miss it a lot. <laughs> but I try to like keep reminding myself of like, I mean, I could always go back to DC whenever I want, but mm -hmm. I don't know if you felt this way when you moved to LA, but there's just something about the comfortability of where you came from and like those moments where you're new and you're unsure, like, is this really where I'm supposed to be? And you just kind of have to put that out of your mind and be like, well, this is where I am right now. And it's so important to stay present and like something is going to happen and something's gonna, I'm going to get a sign that tells me that I should be here. And it always works out that way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for me, when I moved to a new area, I just started exploring and yeah. the, the immediate surrounding I'm in, I try to find little, little things to always go to. So mm -hmm. I think that helps a lot. But I know what you mean. When you first move somewhere, it, it takes a little bit to adjust. But I yeah. think the beauty of Brooklyn, especially when you move to Brooklyn, is there's so many little parks in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, in a way, is just like D.C., but bigger. There's yeah. so many beautiful <laughs> parks in Brooklyn. Yeah, just, just talking about New York makes me mi miss New York. But I committed to another year in L.A. for now. So I'll, yeah, I'll be in LA for another year, but who knows? Maybe I will move to New York. I mean, like you said, no other city has that energy, and I fucking love that energy. Forgive my French, but I love the energy of Manhattan. Yeah, there, it's, it's, it's really anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, it's just there's everything. It's it's like yeah. so cliche and cheesy to say, but it's a it's a melting pot. I mean, yeah. you can you I hear you like seven different languages in an hour mm -hmm. just like on my commute to work and I I love that just being so immersed in so many different types of people I think yeah. it I think it makes me a better person because I'm just even if I don't talk to those people I feel like something I can soak something else in yeah just by being surrounded by it it's 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 pretty cool agreed Totally agree. So I guess this is something to explain to my audience. You mentioned cabaret a lot. What does cabaret mean um, to my audience who's not familiar? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I take it to mean uh, 
a mix of music. So, uh, uh, so it's, it's a show. So one, it's a show, it's a performance, but it's not specific. It's just like a cabaret. Like we're throwing different people in together, different types of music. I don't really have, some cabarets have themes. I never really have a theme, um, but it's not like a concert of like one band. It's not like a jazz concert. It's not like, um, you know, a folk concert or something. And it, it, it just, it kind of focuses more on the people who are there to perform and also the audience who's there because they get like a, a kind of a one night thing. Like whatever happens that night, we're probably not going to replicate it ever again. And mm. so it's just cool to be there in the moment. Wow, I see. So, so I see what the draw of a cabaret that it's like, it's almost like an improv show. Like every night's going to be different. Every night's going to be different laughs, different sources of cheer and everything. Oh yeah, totally. And mm -hmm. different, I, I love to just mix it up and have different performers because the energy is so cool and mm -hmm. i'm you know i'm never gonna wear the same outfit so that's something different too yeah exactly And the other thing, since we're talking about music and that, back in, even in high school, your singing style was very jazzy, but tell me about the growth of you as a jazz artist. Mm, I mean, I appreciate that. I, I don't, I don't necessarily think of myself as a jazz singer. I mean, mm -hmm. it's such, uh, it's such a specific art form and I never was like a jazz like trained in jazz singing so mm -hmm. I think it's hard for me to claim that since I didn't really have that training but I definitely definitely influenced by jazz and actually um <laughs> we brought up Flory Bagel earlier but she's mm -hmm. been my friend for over 10 years we became friends in high school when I transferred to Walter Johnson and she always listened to a lot of jazz music and always had a lot of jazz music in her house and mm -hmm. Blossom Deary. And I think the first time I ever heard a Sarah Vaughn song was at her house and Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald. And I mean, these are still like classic, brilliant women because they are legends and their sounds you know, I think are timeless. So they definitely, it definitely influenced me growing up, getting away from musical theater music and into more jazz and Peggy Lee and then Dinah Washington. And I started to go down and started to listen to, I mean, I grew up listening to Diana Ross because my dad loved Diana Ross mm -hmm. and going down kind of the from jazz into like a soul music and Betty Swan and Betty Carter and um, uh, just that, that era of the sixties and, you know, and the temptations and like, and the backup singing singers were always like that sound and those harmonies were always so just like always made my ear really, really happy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, I think I was doing more musical theater, but always really got, but was always really into music. And before Spotify and like right before Pandora, um, do, do you remember David Orkin? Yes, I remember him. How's he doing? I think he's doing really well. We, oh. we, we, I, I touch base with him every now and then, but um, his brother, his older brother was really into music and I was hanging out with, with David a lot. Mm -hmm. And his brother would play incredible music, Blonde Redhead and The Shins and all of this like 2007 to 2008 like music, like when Pitchfork was cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you could go online before Pandora, you could go online and like type in a band I think I typed in like blind pilot and there would be like a web of other bands that you should look into. And so then I went to their website and looked up their music and I just, 
and Rilo Kylie and t- t- um, Ted Leo and the pharmacists. Like I just started to get so into music and then Pandora happened and I was so into Pandora listening to Pandora all the time. And then Spotify came out and I would just like, just could not like stop listening to music. And then in college, when I was living at my mom's house and commuting into at to, uh, blah, into AU, they had a bluegrass station that I found. I, I love five. WAMU bluegrass. Oh my I, God. Every Saturday, I believe it was, or Sunday. I mean, it, they had, I mean, they played bluegrass every day, uh-huh. but I think Saturday and Sundays was like, that's when they did Prairie Home Companion and they would do like, they would do like kind of modern bluegrass. Yeah, stained um, like glass the bluegrass or something like that. Yeah, um, the grass bowls and, and I started to get so into bluegrass. So I just like, I just, and still like, I just try to listen to everything and like, I think if I wasn't a performer, like I would want to work for some kind of music, whether it's a music company or Spotify or a music magazine or so far sounds like, mm-hmm. I just think music is life. And, and it just happened randomly that I put a bunch of people together, put a bunch of guys together and we, we had a band and we played together for two years. Um, and you can see some stuff that I have with them on my YouTube channel yeah, um, I've seen some just, of those. Yeah, just search And for those of you watching, I will link that so you guys can see too. Yeah, yeah, that was that was really fun getting to play with them. Um, and I'm, and that's like something else I'm going into as I get back to New York is establishing a new band or a new. There's just so many incredible musicians in New York. I've been able to like, when I need guitar, when I need piano, when I need drums, like I just piece it all together, but to find that group and those people who like really want to make a sound together is the most exciting part. Yeah, I think that's what makes New York so cool because it's much more densely populated than LA. If you need someone, they're a subway ride away. And LA, freaking, you could be driving two hours and you're still not there. That's too much. Yeah, so talking to you makes me miss New York. Yeah. My audience says, I know a lot of you want me to go to New York. Maybe I will. Yeah. Maybe you should have like a interview New York tour or something. Make it, you can write everything off on your business expenses. That's very true. I could just make a travel and just make a lot of videos. That way it's justified. It's very true. There you go. Yeah. So do you write your own songs, Shana? I do. I do. Actually, I just, um, I just put one of my own songs up on my Instagram oh, wow. <laughs> uh, at Shana Blast, super easy. And I put it on okay. Facebook as well. So it's one of my own originals. I haven't like had official recordings of it, but I'm, um, I'm in the early process of making my own, wow. finding my own sound, which is really exciting. Do you want to give a sample of the song you wrote? Uh, do I want to give a sample right now? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> You have to go online and and see the full thing with the music. It's not fair. I haven't warmed up. That's like asking a stand-up comedian, like, oh, you do stand-up? Like, tell me a joke. (laughs) No, I I think anyone who's interested, like, I promise it'll be way better than anything I could do right now in the moment. Um, Mm -hmm. But check it out on YouTube or online. Um, I think that will be a much better reward than me singing it this afternoon the sun is coming out which is nice um well that's I know so we funny have- you said that you know because the sun's out every day here so when someone's I like oh yeah the so sun's jealous. coming out i'm like oh yeah the east coast has weather see that's what i would love to give up by moving to la is having the sun all the time because new york winters are rough yeah yeah um but i know we gotta wrap up in a little bit so is there what else what else do you want to know about me if there is anything else (laughs) Um, i honestly think this was a good interview yeah this was Um, so fun thank you so much for 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 asking me to do this and thank you everyone for watching i really appreciate it absolutely so for those of you watching I will put some social media links so you guys can follow Shana. 
And Shada, feel free to leave a comment, whatever, on this video. I'll, I'll probably put it up at least on two channels, maybe on the third one. I'll have to think about the third one. But either way, um, I'll let you know when this goes up. And yeah. Yeah, feel free Thanks to so comment, much. et cetera. Absolutely. Yeah. Shana. Okay, everybody Thank out you. there, take care of each other. Definitely. All right, Shayna. Bye. Talk to you soon. Okay, thanks.